Okay, we're on the outskirts of Puebla, walking through a Friday market, gonna go try and find some lunch. Busy day out here. Busy, busy day. Look at that chorizo. I saw some soup in the back corner right near the butchers that looked good. Looks like lots of broth and bones in it, so let's go try and find that. This is special stuff. This is the black fungus that grows on corn. They put in tacos all across Mexico, but I've actually never seen it fresh. Usually in the States you get it in a can or something like that, but that is beautiful. Look at these squash blossoms too. This is what this is called. Aximole de Zancaron. So this is a super local stew. It's using a special uh, string bean or it's like a seed that they use here. It's seasonal goat meat cooked in a soup. It's called Aximole. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Wow, it's essentially a goat soup. Slow cooked goat shank in there. Yeah. Beautiful. So I'll try and find it in the market. The guaje, uh, which is in this, which makes it special, it's a string bean. It's, uh, it's what gives this dish its name. Very interesting. I'll try and track it down in the market, what it looks like, but it kind of looks like a long, flat bean. Guaje. Okay, my man has showed me guaje. Uh -huh, this That's is the bean. bean. So it's picante? No, el no. picante es el otro, el rojo. Yeah, okay. Uh, el guaje este. Okay. Gracias. So he didn't say it's not spicy, it's, it's basically just like a savory dish. It adds kind of like an earthiness, I guess. To be honest, I have no clue, but this is one banging goat stew, that's for sure. I have two dunking vessels. I have the local blue corn tortilla here, where I got the semita, which is the bread they use, which is the bread they use for famous semita sandwiches, both good. You could just come here wasted, hungover, and feel good in about 15 seconds. I'm getting it to go, it's too massive. Wow. It's like a consomme for the, one of the soups. Just dining right next to the butcher. Beautiful. Very memorable meal. Half butcher, half soup stall. Great spot. I've never seen that before. Those are uh, river crayfish from Puebla. That's so cool. Yeah, that's like Louisiana. So we're at a molina, which is like a mill where they grind all the moles. This guy's doing mole rojo. Wow. He's got garlic, chilies. And that's sort of the beginning of like maybe two or three of the ingredients of maybe 30 to go into these mole. Cool. Tubs of lard. Okay, I found the restaurant in town that serves escamoles, which is basically ant larvae. Very traditional, old school food from Puebla. And they're all around Mexico. Big on insects here, maguey worms, uh, grasshoppers, obviously they have a type of beetle they eat. So we're gonna try the ant larvae. I think they saute it up with some jalapeno and some butter. So pretty simply, should taste pretty good. Never had it. They call it Mexico's caviar. Looking forward to it. Mezcal cart in a restaurant. That looks good. Enchiladas with mole? Yes, yes. Wow. Escamoles. Escamoles. Yes. Amazing. Gracias. 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 Try this straight up. Tastes like butter. Tastes like creamy butter. Hmm, very good.
That's crazy skill. Go find one of those neat ones in the pastry shop. Where are they? Huh? Where are they? Look for the little twisty thing. The little twisty. They're nowhere to be found. This is like the busiest bakery I've ever seen. There's a huge influence, French influence, in the bread baking here, and it is very, very good. Throughout Mexico, is good bread, but Puebla has really good bread. This is called concha. Put like tons of sugar on the bread though, like that has a crispy kind of, I don't know, like a graham, kind of a graham, cinnamon toast crunch type vibe to it. Definitely some uh, low glycemic index foods, but man, they taste good. Okay, look at this in the tortilla factory. So, mes? Maiz. Maiz. Masa? Mes, masa? Maiz, no sal la masa. Luego para la máquina y esa es la tortilla. Tortilla. That's how it's made. So it goes from the corn, and then they grind up the corn, they do the mass over there, and they put it on this machine. It's a factory. We're in the Cholula Market, a town just outside of Puebla. A town I think known for hot sauce. I'm assuming Cholula is named after here. We've made it to the top of Puebla, actually Cholula. So you've got a nice cathedral up there. That's what's on the hot sauce bottle. And then this. Some local pulquerias in Cholula. This guy's doing this old school ice cream method with the salted ice on the outside, drops the temperature of the ice, stir it really fast with lime juice, and we're gonna have a fresh lime sorbet here in the streets, granite in the streets of Cholula. Ah, gracias. gracias. There's a lot of overrated desserts on this planet. A good lemon sorbet cannot be beat. And this guy with the fresh lime juice, spin together in a cup, incredible. Life-changing, refreshing. The man deserves a hundred shops across America. That is the new Cholula de Pueblo train. Didn't think I'd be riding a train in Mexico. Here we are. Great ride, pretty comfy, about 40 minutes. Connects to two cities. Train travel in Mexico. Probably a little nicer than it used to be before they got rid of all the rail. That would have been a fun era of the 70s, riding the trains from Mexico. Nice. <laughs> Spits you out at the old train museum. This is cool. These are the old trains they used to run through Mexico way back in the day, 60s, 70s. I mean, you could imagine people getting on those. You know, the top bunk there, what an exciting little cart you'd be there, dining on the tracks. Of course, that's all gone now. It's been replaced, but... The golden era of train travel in Mexico.